Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now we have with us a very special guest. She'll be joining us to look at what, how youths can contribute and lend their voice to nation development. She's been doing that with her platform as well. She's an environmental scientist with practical experience in environmental administration, development curriculum, and management. She's the founder of Action GX, a nonprofit organization whose mission is to encourage children and adults to love and take better care of their community and the earth through environmental education and participation. We have with us Olua Toyosi Bakari, Walter Carrington Fellow. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us. You're welcome. Thank you. Why did you pick particular interest in the environment, in the environment? Oh, that's quite interesting. Okay, I, when I was young, my dad used to send me to buy a bulb, and it would specifically say 60 watts bulb. And me being the child that I was, I would probably go and get 100, 100 watts, and he's like, go and return it. And in my head, I'm like, it's the same thing. But as we, I started growing up, it would explain to me that they generate different kind of power. So it's very important that you know that you should buy the 60 watts and not the 100 watts. And if we are probably going to buy a fridge or freezer, I would want the probably pink color or red color. But he always said something, practicality over, over beauty. So it was always like you always have to look at the energy efficiency. You have to look at is he A plus rating, is he A rating. You need to look at how much, how many power is going to pull. Wait, your dad used to give you these lectures? Uh, yes. What, what, did you, what was your dad's background? My, <laughs> my dad actually he is into printing. So he, he knows everything, like oh, little wow. things about everything. Nice. So he, he used to just teach little things. And then one day we were going to, I don't know where we were going to, but we're on the, I think we're on our way to Oimbo. And I saw a lady feeding a child close to a waste dump. And it really broke my heart because I was like, why would you be doing that? And coincidentally, on the radio, it came up that we were generating like 12,000 tons of waste in Lagos daily. And I thought, okay, I'm quite versed about the environment, but I need to go and learn more. So I went to do my master's at the University of Salford, learning environmental and public health. So it made me more interested in that. I could actually lend my voice teaching people about the environment. Okay, so I'm happy that you mentioned about teaching people about the environment. How has that been since you started in Nigeria? Because Honestly. we know our people need your education. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's not been easy. I've got to say that I'm sure there are a lot of environmental bodies that, of course, it's, it's a small community. So there are different people teaching about the environment, telling people, especially younger people. I love to work with younger people because I believe that if you tell a child something, they will go back home and they'll probably tell their older sisters, their brothers, their parents. So I believe that when you start younger, you can actually move higher and it's young people are impressionable so you can they can easily learn oh don't throw this out don't throw this out so it's it's not been an easy journey but it's been a fulfilling journey so i enjoy doing it every day i'm interested you know in this conversation we're having about the environment while we're discussing highlights i've mentioned about how we have been experiencing crazy rainfall in lagos and that is not the norm we're seeing in other other countries that the snow you know it's it's been really cold in several other countries and a lot of this is going to get worse, unfortunately. It might not get better because we're experiencing climate change. Yeah. So just for the benefit of, you know, let's give people the benefit of the yeah. doubt. What are the factors that are contributing to climate change? Okay, there, there's no one factor that, that is contributing to climate change because most people will say, oh, when the industrialization age came in, that's when, you know, we started having global warming, the ozone layer started depleting. So most people will say, oh, it's because of the industrialization age, which is true, because, you know, most times now, as we, as we expand, you know, we have, in Nigeria, you can't tell somebody, oh, don't give birth to 10 children. They'll probably tell you, oh, uh, you can't be counting my children. Children are a gift of God. Yeah. The government, well, is trying to control that in a way. because so over, overpopulation is an issue because you're trying to make more space for people. And so you're cutting down more trees. You're clearing out more places that are supposed to provide or, or just clean the air for us. We are clear, clearing most of it. We are cutting down trees, which normally are very, are, apart from being a good shade, they are very good in purifying the air. So overpopulation is a, is a big issue in climate change. And then most people have cars. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't tell somebody not to have a car. It's, it's a means of transportation. But I would like to say that if we had better transport system, it would actually cut the fact that, oh, maybe in a house of four people, the four people have cars. So if you know that maybe you can take a bus to where you're going to, it's easier. But if you can't, let's say if you're going to K2 from probably Oshodi, if you have a car, you'd rather take a car than enter public transport. So, you know, the, mo most of our emissions 
are, are killing the environment. And we really don't, of course, the UN and, and different international bodies have the baseline emission like you're supposed to meet. But because we, of course, we follow them, but we don't have like implementation, deep implementation. So everyone is just maybe a car that has not, and that's why MOTs are important because you're trying to check, oh, is this car in working in good condition? But some people, I'm sure they skip MOTs. So every, their, their emissions are being released. I mean, we know the, the big car company that failed the emissions test. Yes. That was asked to recall all the yes. cars. That they so, you know, in, in other countries, it's quite important because if you break the rule, you're, you're, you're being fined. Like, for example, in... I know in some parts of London, you have to pay to take your car. So I feel that if we probably, impl I know, implement things like that, it would be, it would reduce how we release emissions into the air. And for example, even people that throw plastics, I mean, you, I'm sure if you stay in Lagos, you see that every day. Mm -hmm. Someone will eat gala, throw the nylon mm -hmm. out, and then you see, ah, there's flood. And people don't realize that if you throw something, it's not going to, Maybe if you throw something in VI, it's not going to stay there. By the time it rains, it will probably move down to, let's say, Oshodi. Um, just guess, and then you have the gutters being clogged. And then, of course, we most of us like seafood. And then by the time you throw your plastic or your nylon bags on the road, it washes into the, the water. I mean, Lagos is surrounded by water, as we all know. So it washes into the water. If we follow um, Doni Ogunye, she does a great job in, in making sure that waterways are safe for for the turtles, the fishes. So it's, 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 not just, um, it's not just one thing like, oh, cars. So it's different things like, li as little as leaving your water running. Mm. It's, it's not good for the environment. Because you're, I mean, we should start teaching water efficiency or leaving, you see some people leave, their, they're going home on Friday and then they leave their lights on. Lights on. Till, till Monday. I know people say, oh no, but it's, I'm paying my light bills now. I'm, it's, it's no problem, but it's, at the end of the day, it's a problem because you're generating more energy and mm. it, you're, in one way or another, contributing to the depletion of the ozone layer. Okay, so now, you've mentioned many things that can be probable causes for yes. this issue. Now, how do we even say, okay, some people would listen to what you've said and say, yes. well, somebody else is doing it, um, I can't stop doing it. I remember okay. trying to stop somebody once from throwing trash on the road, and the person looked at me like I was a demon. So now, what are the things you would suggest that can be put in place to actually put people in check and just be set as guardrails to avoid these things from happening? First and foremost, I'll say education. I know we, we hammer on educating people, but it's very important because if you know that this thing is going to affect your work or your home, you would take more care of, of what you do. So if I tell somebody that um, if you that you're a fisherman, do you know that your means of livelihood will be cut short if you keep doing this? I think it's more practical for people when they know that their immediate action is it's like a ripple effect. Because most people, if you tell them, oh, don't throw your nylon or derail, they're like, ah, it's not affecting me. I stay in a K2. If I throw something down here, how is it? But you need to, people need to know that or be more aware that their actions don't just affect other people. At the end of the day, it's going to affect them. So apart from education, we also need to... I know most countries are placing bans on plastic bags. Plastic bags are a big issue. Some people will buy something as little as pencil, and then someone gives you a plastic bag. Or you buy... So we need to learn that keep... Most of us have, like, buckle bags at home, or we have, like, all these bags that are made with... Um, made with basket mm -hmm. kind of material. You can keep rolling, you can roll them in your bag while you go to the market. There's something I, I've been doing for years and a lot of supermarket people keep looking at me like, why is this girl doing this? I take my backpack when I'm going shopping. Cause I'm like, I don't want your bag. I, I'll just, I'll throw it away and it's just waste. So by the time I finish buying, I just tell them, please let me just take my bag in so I can put my stuff inside. So people- And need... you're not, you're not really, you're like one of the few 
Okay, you're like one in a million. There, there are not lots of people that do this. True. And that is what we should actually be encouraging. I mean, the last year, the hashtag was, if you can't reuse it, refuse it. Yes. Encouraging people not to use plastic straws, take away parks, yes. you know, just to find ways to eliminate plastic. Yes. Now, when we're looking at youth development, one of the key areas of youth development is education. Yes. So how would you say that we can incorporate this into our mm -hmm. educational sector? And also, if you have the opportunity to influence policy making with regards, you know, seeing that you have have a background in it, yes. in the environment. What are some of the policies you would like to see that are being incorporated in Nigeria? I'm sure you've, you've mentioned the plastic banning in yes. Kenya and in several other countries. Yes. So in addition to that, you know, what are the other policies you'd like to see? So the yeah. education okay. bits, how can we incorporate this? Yes. And then what are the policies you'd like to see? Um, okay, let me take the policy bits. Um, I have a podcast where I talk about different environmental issues. And it was funny because I was trying to research if we actually had policies on environmental issues. And beautiful enough, we have loads of them. We have policies that follow the international standards. But I don't keep wondering, why is it that we don't do them? Implementation? I implementation is a big issue. So it's not that we don't have these policies. We have them. We have them. If you want to read them, they're all over the internet. You can, you can find them. But implementation is a big issue. For example, I know one of the policies I read was if you want to, let's say, have a brick-making industry, you need to have an environmental impact assessment done. A lot of people are not aware of that. And I'm not sure a lot of people do that because the environmental impact assessment is to check if, if there's a school around you, are you going to affect their water? Are you going to affect their air? Are you going to just check different, where, where your toilet is? Is it going to be um, a nuisance to the society? So there are a lot of these policies that we have and are written down, but there are no implementation. And it's a big problem because a lot of people just feel, it's not my problem. Of course, we have a lot that sta states that if you throw something out of your, a moving car, you are to be arrested. Mm -hmm. But that it's, there's no implementation. People keep doing it daily. So I feel that with the policies that we have, let's bring all of them out. Let's start thinking of proper implementation of them so that it's not just, oh, we have the policies somewhere, so that someone that wants to read it should read them. They should be implement, implemented. And for education, I, from the environmental point of view, it should be from when you're young. So it shouldn't be, oh, when you get to... Because sometimes, um, I'm sorry to say, I mostly have an issue with adults that are educated because they don't see a problem with whatever they do. But if you start from when people are young, there is a curriculum. Because, I mean, I, there's a project I'm working on now. It's working on STEM and environment. So, I mean, you'll see a lot of people that will say, oh, I learned maths in school. I've not done anything with it. So you can use maths and use it to solve, solve environmental problems. For example, you're calculating your carbon footprint, how much carbon you're emitting into the air as a person. That ties in nicely with your maths knowledge or with your technology or science or engineering. You're trying to find out, okay, how can I, how can I as a person solve the oil, spill, oil spillage problem, which we know that we have here. So. Sure. You can tie it nicely with what we do in school. So it's not as if, oh, you're, I don't think that in the, the solution to environmental issues should be separated. I feel that it can, they should be incul inculcated in our curriculum so that young people grow with it. So it's not just, oh, I'm learning about the environment as a, as a maybe, or oh, A separate course. Yeah, as a separate well. course. So it's just, as you're learning your science, you're learning about how to solve environmental issues. As you're learning technology, you're solving environmental issues. So they go in nicely. Okay, so still on what we're talking about, implementation policies, and then the environment. Now, we discussed the issue of population, the population. Yes. And we, you mentioned earlier that um, um, people who want to start up businesses or anything relating to the environment, we're, we're supposed to go through a certain assessment. Yes. And actually assess, uh, you know, how healthy it would be for their business yes. in the environment where they are. But these days, we have people buying lands even very close to the airport, for example. Yes. We have people buying land in the industrial estates. Mm -hmm. And they are building houses there. And they're telling other people, the place is good enough. Come yes. stay there. Don't you think that even the government has to work on mm. either expanding state boundaries or find a way to actually encourage people I'm not going to these areas? Because... Um, <laughs> okay, I think... Normally, who gives, um, the government gives, or there's a particular governmental body that gives uh, approval for you to have lands in those areas. So if, 
if you're not, if the government is not disapproving you buying lands there, then people don't really bother. And of course we have laws. You can't have a house close to where there are tankers. And if a tanker firm or tanker where they park comes to a residential area, you need to go and report because it's, it, it's an offense. So if I think if the government is not really doing anything about it, then people won't see any reason because, oh, it's free land and I want to build a house. So it, they don't see it as an issue. So I feel that it, goes, it ties back into our implementation. If nothing is done about it, then people don't see it as, as a big deal. All right. Now, before we let you go, let's talk about your work with the Carrington Youth Fellowship Initiative. We know that as much as we're discussing about the environment and how we need to make it better, we need to put leaders and people at the helm of affairs that would ensure that they would remember all these things and put them into implementation. Yes. You've said that these laws and these policies exist, but we need to see that these laws are being implemented. Hence, you know, uh, counting down to elections 2019. Yes. Now, what is your organization doing with regards to enabling and creating awareness on how youths can actively participate in deciding who they want to elect into power. Okay, so baseline, you can, of course, you can't tell, we can't tell people who to vote for, but we can actually educate them on different electoral process. I feel that young people, or what we feel like, young people need to get more involved in our electoral process, the different levels. So don't just leave it to, oh, it's none of my business, I'm going to stay at home. So we're working on sensitizing young people. We're having panel sessions, we're having different discussions on this is what is going on. This, we need to take bold measures. We need to understand that our votes count. We need to understand that we, the people, have the ballot power. So it's not just, oh, I'm going to sit down. I, I mean, I have countless conversations with people, and I ask them, are you going to vote? No, like, no, like, why? My votes won't count. But I realize that it's when we start, we realize that our vote does actually count because we, we will keep going they would keep have, we'll keep having that cycle of oh I won't vote my vote won't count so we're trying to tell young people that keep voting keep going out to actually lend your voice because at the end of the day there's going to be a change Brilliant. when we keep doing what we do so when is this happening where is it happening and how can okay. people get to be a part so of it? we have two events coming up on Thursday the 7th of February is our sensitization events where we have different sessions and we have a panel session you can ask INEC any question you want you can talk to um, the orientation agency, ask them, because we want young people to be able to know that these different agencies exist, and you can ask them any question, talk to them about, oh, this is the fear you have, this is the question you want to have. So on Thursday, we have the panel session, 7th of February, and on Friday, we have, like, it's a chilled-out event, it's like a, a hangout. So you can come, network with anyone, talk to anybody, and they're both happening, same venue. It's at Civic High, 42 Montgomery, Yaba, and you can also, on Thursday, the time is by 11 a.m. Okay. And on Friday, the time, it starts by 4 a.m. Sorry, 4 p.m. <laughs> 4 p.m., please. 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. We're not Thank doing any night Thank you so much for out. joining us. You know, and Thank we you. wish you all the best with the event coming oh, up. And hopefully, you. you'd be able to ask questions with regards to what our leaders are planning to do yes. for the environment. Very important. Those of you who are saying, you know, um, I'm the only one. You know, you, you mentioned that people look at you funny. When yeah. two days in a row, people have thrown things out of vehicles. Beside One was beside me yesterday at a wow. shopping mall. I got down from the car, picked it up, looked at the lady, then went to throw it in a bin, came back and looked at her again, and she said sorry to me. And then I got into the car I was in. Today was a taxi that he was driving me. I went down, he threw a can of a, a drink. Wow. I went and picked it up and put it back in his car and said, when you get to it, been throw it away. So we should do things like that. Yeah. That way you may not be able to change everybody, but you would make him you would make one person feel embarrassed. Next time they will think of doing this thing and probably they will feel ashamed. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we wish you a fantastic day. We'll see you again. Same time tomorrow. Uh, today is World Cancer Day. Yep. Please, as much as possible. January was the month of cervical cancer awareness. Go get text tested. Do your get your vaccine and ensure that you know you that's one of the most preventable cancers because it shows pre-cancer pre stages yes. so please for women who have been sexually active go get tested and then get your vaccine and for people who are women who haven't been sexually active please go get your and vaccine even for the men too for your prostate you should actually go get tested and there are vaccines that can be taken to prevent this at least for the women for cervical cancer for the next two years you will not be prone to it trust me you will be healthy. All right, thank you so much for joining us on today's show. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonga videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.